Brian Avery here and thank you for coming to this next episode of um, Our Story as a Beekeeper. Now I've just done a video um, which you will have seen and I've linked it to this one and this one I will link back to that one which is telling you and showing you about but the reasons why I chose Broodminder to look after our hives and uh, by that I mean by monitoring it when I can't be in the hives which I, I wouldn't want to be doing every day this will send me a whole lot of information I also showed you as part of that process how um, we or told you a bit about the scales, the um, temperature and humidity um, sensors both inside the hives as well as the one that I've put out in the actual apiary itself and further the scales to actually sort of be able to weigh the hives themselves. So what I wanted to do in this video um, is because I've shown you in that one also how to activate those, how I installed those on into both on top of a brood and under the extra hives. What I want to show you is what do you get and why do I why am I doing this? So first of all, um, Broodminder. So I did quite a lot of research, but Broodminder seems to tick all the boxes of what I want to get out of this, um, which is understanding a bit about temperature, um, the humidity, um, and also the, um, understanding the relationship between that and this weight of the hives. You can make um, the advantage of this because Broodminder um, have partnered now with Lorenzo and his team in Melissa, which are based in France here in um, Europe. Um, I'm, of course, based in the UK. Um, is that they're now collaborating and are sharing an information. And what I'm going to show you is a bit about Broodminder and also Melissa. But because I've also mentioned previously, is that you can now also help with um, citizen science or so crowd, crowd science of sharing the information from all of your sensors. If that is your wish, that is your option, you do not have to do so. And I will show you how that all helps. And all that information goes into something called B counts. That's the citizen science aspect um, that Broodminder shares the information with. So let me go through this first of all. So as you can see, the strap line for Broodminder is every hive counts. And I think that's a fantastic sort of strap line for what it actually is. So one thing in my video that you saw, um, I refer to um, being able to, for the weight sensors, being able to now buy a DIY pack. This is it just yet. It literally came out um, a couple of weeks after I actually bought the, uh, the weight sensors that I did. But to be honest, um, they are perfect for my needs. What, what you can see here is you have the actual sort of circuit board here and you have the four sensors here, just like you saw the ones on they have exactly the same sensors as you saw on the scales that I actually have. It's the same board, but the board that I have only has two of these sensors in on each of the scales. So you can see these are um, divvied up so you can actually have four. But what I've also allowed this so you can now also add other things to this, other sensors to this, which is going to be fantastic. Um, because if you want to do something um, like for your own purposes, you'll be able to take advantage of this. And you can make your own sort of waterproof environment to put all these in. But also if you didn't want to use it for... Um, food minding and bees, you could have potentially use it for something else. The other thing I mentioned in there was the hubs that you can have out in the apiary. So there's both a cellular version, so if there's no Wi-Fi connection, although Wi-Fi is actually um, just not reliable, you can actually just use the um, sort of a cellular version. But they do have the Wi-Fi version, looks exactly the same. You can see here the solar panels on there, and um, here is the all the sort of electronics inside. So there's a, if you were like in a home apiary, but you didn't have a power supply or you didn't want to have to keep changing batteries, then one of the things you can do is just get this, but with the um, cellular, no, not the cellular, the Wi-Fi version as well. But they look exactly the same on the face of it. This is something new that they've just come out with. Um, so rather than doing what I did, which is um, set up my phone, a spare iPhone that I had as a hub, and that connects um, through Bluetooth to all of the devices, and then it sends that information from the phone to my Wi-Fi at home because it's a home apiary and then that sends it up to the cloud to Broodminder to be shared accordingly. But what you can do instead of that, um, if you didn't have a phone, you can also get one of these, which is called a subhub. You can see there via the pen, it's only about the size of a pen. Um, it's for scale purposes only, I understand. But that will just allow you to do exactly the same thing, um, but it's actually just using this hub. Yeah, or, or sub hub they calling it, which connect via Bluetooth and um, to the devices and Wi-Fi if you've got the connection. But it's battery powered, so you might have to just keep changing every once in a while. Now, once you've actually signed up, I've signed up for 
um, Broodminder um, and their premium version. The reason for that is it allows you to sync automatically or you can set up your hubs. So if you plan to have a hub um, to monitor or um, then you can you really need to sort of sign up to a premium version. I believe it was 54 um, US dollars that I actually paid for um, to have that for a year subscription. But what it also allows you to do is it will sync every single one of your devices. So if you go for the free version, which is again your option, you can just go there, but you'll have to go through every single device separately. So I've got five devices. I will have seven hopefully next year and I may get even more. Um, so um, over time, you know, I don't really necessarily personally want to be there waiting for every single one to sort of collect, the, uh, collect the, um, the information from each of the devices and then send it up to the cloud. So um, I, I, when we advance you doing a premium version, it's bigger that I want to have a hub and I will just do it automatically, check once an hour and send it information. So what it also shows you, this shows you a link and it goes straight to a link to Melissa that I mentioned that Lorenzo and his team does, which I, I touch on just now. But what it, this is just showing you once I've logged on, they have these links on this side around um, some guides, um, B counts, there's the citizen science bit, which I'm going to show you as well. But also shows you, well, my APRI. Well, I've only got the one APRI, but if you had multiple APRIs, they would be listed here. And then if I were to click on that, uh, if I go to the next slide, that would show you that, that what I've set up at the moment is the three hives. So I have my double flow hives, um, if you've seen that review um, about my flow hive. And also one of my early videos was actually about my single um, comb hive. Why is it a comb hive, not a flow hive? Well, this one is a, is a traditional comb hive. It's not a flow hive. So whereas my double hive is a uh, double, double long hive is actually um, to be two flow hives, hence why the naming on that. Now this one is called the west facing one because that's where one of the bees in and it faces west for the entrance and this is the east one. So um, because the entrance faces east, it's quite simply. And this one here, that is the sensor that um, tells me just the humidity and temperature in the apiary itself, but not in the actual hives. The next one is if I click onto um, the, um, into my hive, um, one thing I've asked at the moment is how do I, um, this tells me that this is my humidity and temperature sensor. Where is it? You can see that's highlighted. I'll show you that. I am going to be able to change that. I just don't know how at the moment, but I'm sure Lorenzo and the team at um, Broodminder would let me know how I can change that because it's a, um, normally you have to say it's on the bottom brood and then you'd have a top brood. Well, because it's a long hive, I don't have a bottom or top brood. What I want to do is just say um, brood at the front of a hive and, and potentially brood towards the back of a hive if that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to rename it, but currently at the moment just call that custom one. So that's on top of a brood at the front of a hive. And then um, underneath that is a scale. But, but you can see the um, the temperatures and humidity sensor is actually highlighted at the moment. And this is looking at the last seven days view and you can see what that is there. Um, and it compares, it tells you sort of there what you can see here is what the temperature um, is because we can see here it's in the number one long high facing west. That's one of the bees in. That's the device name um, right there, the extra code. We can see we're looking at the temperature and the humidity. So you can see what, what's actually happening there. So it's quite useful and you can also look at all of these hives separately. Now if I click on the same details, but what I've just done now is 24 hours, um, so it's zoomed in. Remember, this was only just as of um, Sunday, so that was yesterday. So this had only been in these sensors just over 24 hours, so this is why it's only just, you see part of it. So after a few days or weeks, you, you'd get a lot more enriched data, um, so you could actually see variability. But again, you can see the temperature and the humidity, and not surprising, as the, humidity, the temperature has gone up, not surprisingly, the humidity has come down because it's an inverse relationship between the relative humidity um, versus the temperature. So as temperature rises, humidity comes down. As temperature comes down, humidity goes up. So um, it's just um, useful to do that. Now, what's, why, why is this important? Um, part of what um, they found um, through the Melissa team and Broodminder and the citizen science with some of the universities and things that are involved is that I can tell that sometimes that when if temperature goes up but um, within a hive but not uh, outside um, and it particularly if it's different to other colonies in your apiary, what that could mean is that potentially there's going to be a, a, a risk of swarming. So you could potentially go down, find out is it and stop the swarm or let it swarm and go collect that swarm. So there's little things like that. Also, you could tell if, um, um, let's say the scale 
um, but it will tell you if there's all of a sudden you can see there's a flow on or it's coming down as well um, if, because it's flow stopped. Now this is looking at the scales, um, so this is the weight, you can see where I actually put in the scales um, and then you can just sort of see the gain the relative temperature. Um, it always tells you what the battery is, so that's always good. So it will give you a warning if um, it runs out, and it will give you the weights and as well. So it's just quite useful to sort of monitor all of this. But over time, just looking at this by in itself is not going to help you. It's about understanding what it means over time. Now, one of the things you can also do is when I'm actually going into this is you can look at through my Broodminder all my hives and then all my devices, and you can see here which hive each of those devices are actually in as well and when did they last update and things so you might go oh but something's not um, updating uh, you might want to go and check that particular device um, to see if there's anything maybe the batteries run out or something else because you missed the warning on that but hopefully that's quite useful and you can then dive into any of these devices or into any of our hives depending on the way you actually want to look at it now all that information gets set up to um, Broodminder and Broodminder, if you said it can be used for citizen science, um, then it will be sent off to be counted. So be counted is um, where all that information is available. You can go and look at anybody's. So go look at our, our hives, and I'm going to show you a bit about that at the moment. So if I then have a look here, so this is um, they have a, a, a lovely map um, to show you where um, people who are using these Broodminder devices are sending information across the globe where are they based so not surprisingly predominantly in the us because that's where broodminder is is based that's where they started and then they've uh, gradually been uh, sort of moving out so let me just have a look at each region in um, in, in turn so key here is the U, uh, usa and canada can't see anything over in mexico at the moment but uh, one thing that's quite interesting, you can see these individual bees, if I can call them those, those are just lone apries. Um, there's no other apries in that area. But where you've got these multiple ones, um, whether it's, you, it, it'd be too far out to be able to see that data uh, and break it down. But if you were to keep zooming in, then you'd eventually get to a lot of individual bees for the individual apries in the area. Um, and there are some protections in place so people can't actually find the actual apri itself. So because it's all down to postcode or zip code, um, depending on um, you know what's used uh, in your country, geographical area. So that's in the US. In Australia and New Zealand, you can see there's um, a few there um, all happening all around the sort of coast and the main um, sort of um, uh, state cities, um, as well as Wellington down here. And I believe this is the Cook Islands um, here, which is technically part of um, and under the administration of New Zealand. So that just gives you an understanding of um, where it's there. Um, closer to my home um, over in London or near London in the United Kingdom. This is a European view. Now, not surprisingly, because um, Broodminder has partnered with Lorenzo and his team of Melissa, um, who are you know in France, you can see there's a concentration in France uh, when I'm looking at a European perspective of users of Broodminder. But I'm sure over time we're going to get to see more and more. We can see it's um, wider um, than it. Now, if I then move into um, into the UK, uh, you can see at the moment they're all in and around um, London. And if I zoom in here, we can see that the individual bees uh, are being the different um, colonies or apries within each of those um, sort of um, around London. So nothing's actually in London at the moment. But this is our hive here over near Harpenden in lovely Hertfordshire here in the UK. And what you can see here is this is um, selected by. Um, Something that I, I don't recognize, so it's not I've chosen anything, but you can see it's completely anonymized. You can't see, even if I were to zoom in any further, you can't see exactly where my colony is because it's based on the um, zip code or um, postcode of an area which is probably around this size. So it doesn't really help people if you want to try and steal any your hives or anything, they're not going to get the data from this. But it gives you enough of an understanding of what's in, in your area. So you can, so for instance, you can see these two um, APRIs could probably compare themselves and um, see what data and see how they are performing. Um, but yep, so you could click on any one of these. So if I were to think 
one of those. I've gone into um, the, one, one of my hives and it will tell me the weights, the temperatures, and if I were to go scroll down, you can also see the humidity again. And that's the information that gets pulled and, and can be used for citizen science. You can see here, this was selected for the last three days as of yesterday, which is, as I said, just over 24 hours that was available. So, so that's with, with the citizen science part. Now, to make it really useful for us, um, what, and, and one thing I loved about Broodminder when I was researching was this um, affiliation with Melissa and Lorenzo's team. So, um, as I said, he's based in, uh, uh, in France, so hence why we got French and English um, for his emblem. And um, when I, we just sort of have a look at what that is. When you log on, and so this costs no more, if you're already with Broodminder, you automatically get all of this um, access, um, So and it costs no more, as I said. And with a premium version, you get all the premium rights with this automatically. So when you first log on, you've got the APRI, it will tell you what your hives are. This is my um, external um, um, temperature and humidity sensor. What it also says is because I input in here to say that I did a um, on the Saturday, the 11th, I did an inspection. So it's got there and there's a summary of my inspection. It says here that there was a flow on and also I started feeding. So um, all quite good then. Also made a note that I didn't see any varroa mites um, as part of um, the, the details. And in the UK, we have something called Bee Base, which is run by um, our Department of Agriculture. Um, which effectively allows us to sort of record um, if there's any diseases or anything that we see in our sort of beehives. So I just noticed that um, there wasn't any. When I go into the explore tab again, and I've clicked on um, one of my hives, so one hive I have at the moment. Again, here we have different um, aspects around the, the um, hive health. This is saying how good the brood, is there flows happening, what's the temperatures, humidities, and so on. So it tells me what it is. So at this moment, you can see this is looking at our general hive health in there and says it was green. Um, and, um, and then what it also means is that when I've looked at here's alerts, I can have set up things to say when things actually happen, the event of in, an inspection. So I can go back and see if there was any issues. And here was also if there was any alerts that came up, for instance, um, there was a big sudden drop in um, the weight, um, then it would allow me to go and inspect. Or if there's a really uh, peak temperature that shot up, I might want to go and open up vents if I hadn't already done so. And again, there's some w um, wind things. So again, when you're looking at all those details, when you're looking again into the next one, which is weather, um, on the right hand side, you can drive in, it will, uh, we'll dive in and you'll be able to see there a bit more details about what the nectar flow is um, and because these sensors are relatively or uh, quite um, sensitive um, they, they, they work out roughly what they believe the flow of nectar is coming in and out and of, um, it, if these are leaving a lot then we're going to see um, that that's going to move quite a bit in, in respect of so shall we say the temperature um, if it's bad temperature, if there's been any rainfall, but what does that actually mean in respect of the flows? Um, because if it's been rain or there's high winds, you'd expect that it's not really, really collecting anything. On the um, inspect side, what you can do is set up um, various alarms. So this is as they understand the science better, they will program the devices, Melissa, that they will send out sort of alerts to us, to, for instance, just say, oh, there's low B activity, there's some drone, as, um, lots of drones actually happening because these all impact what we are seeing. Um, also, you can just see, you know, is anything eggs? So we can actually say, yep, if we're doing an inspection, yes, there are eggs or no, there's no eggs and so on. But also can tell us when there's, um, for instance, some issues um, with like high brood levels, what we might expect, oh, we might need to put some more um, supers or extra bit more brood in, otherwise there might be a risk of swarming when they all cut, um, start emerging. Again, here's some more brood levels, queen cells, have we seen any of these? So we can make notes of these and, and this will all be used as part of the citizen science uh, of what's actually happening. If we're doing any treatments for um, mite controls as well. Um, and then are we actually doing things? So events that we're doing such as, are we taking any honey? Are we harvesting anything? Are we putting on sugar? Are we taking away sugar? So whether it's fondant or um, syrup, um, doesn't really matter. Are we doing actually a, a count mount, uh, to a count test, a wash, um, which would be potentially using, say, one of these. Um, so we can actually just make a record um, of that.
Likewise, um, if we go down to alerts, these are other alerts. So they have different ones for a hive, things that are actually having in a hive. So we'll get warnings about these things like um, high humidity, risk of disease. Maybe we need to open up for ventilation a bit more. All of a sudden, there's a sudden loss of weight. Is that potentially because of swarm? There was a swarm, or is that potentially because of the uh, a hive has been stolen because it's really gone down and it's almost like there's no weight on it? So it can just help you to go and maybe even inspect um, your um, colony and your, your colonies at an apron. And again, here, yeah, weather warnings are happening and also devices. So this is allowing you to understand if a device isn't actually connecting, that it is registered there, is it just a poor signal or even a low battery. So you don't have to keep going testing batteries or realize, oh, there's no signals anymore, oh, it must be the battery. It will warn you in advance so you don't lose any of the data that will be fed through on this. Well, that's it really. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of why I think um, this whole brood mind and monitoring is going to be really interesting. It's good to sort of share uh, that data and over time, um, both through Broodminder and Melusfa, they particularly through Broodminder, they have lots of people around the world who are like their uh, advocates who are doing a lot of this research, they speak to universities and they say, what are we learning from this data so that we can uh, listen and watch those um, and learn a bit more about it and apply it to our own sort of beekeeping. Well, I'm just going to find this really interesting, but it also helps me, as I said, as far as our philosophy, to maybe not necessarily open up the hive and do full inspections quite as often. It doesn't mean I won't be, because we definitely must do if we want to be good beekeepers. I believe we should be looking after a, a bee's health, um, but it allows us to also have those things where we can't be looking at our hives every day to have something that is doing that on our behalf. Anyway, I hope that was useful. If you did find that useful, please do subscribe. And also tick that bell for any further notifications or whether it's reviews or just the next stage of our beekeeping story um, in our family apron here in lovely Hertfordshire. Thank you so much and enjoy your beekeeping.